but so you have limited government versus no government or no ruling class. Do you have you take the libertarian and you say, hey, what if you don't vote for libertarian? What if you disobedient, disobey the IRS outright? To say, hey, all one million of us disobey the IRS, and we're not sending any of them from our money. We're keeping our money. If those ministers who are limited government would say, we flat out disobey the IRS, and we are not sending any of our money, even if they're a small minority, they do far more worthwhile than voting for a libertarian candidate, for a libertarian in the national convention. They do far more to change the world than trying to get a nicer slave master or a nicer uh, slave master relationship on the throne, the nicer slave master in position of power. They do far more to disobey the Iowa and the entire extortion market known as the Iowa and the Federal Reserve. So if if the libertarians would say, hey, we are flat out not taking any more money, or we are not taking any more Federal Reserve notes from the Federal Reserve, they do far more to disobey the, the Fed, local, state, and federal extortion market and the extortionists than if they were to vote and argue over which uh, master should be on the throne. The, power, the problem is the throne. The problem is Donald Trump. The problem is those who believe that Donald Trump has the right to rule the right. The problem is Donald Trump. The problem is the voters think that Donald Trump should be their master. So the problem is with them, and them thinking that Donald Trump has the right to rule over everyone else. And the, the also, the minarchists who happen to believe in limited government while exactly voting for Republicans, and Republicans voting for Republicans and not cutting any spending. You know, guys like Mitt Romney, who, who's like the white version of Obama who's not exactly conservative or physical conservative or small government. He's a big government rhino, Republican in name only. He's not a libertarian. He's not a minarchist. He's a Republican in name only. You know, fiscal conservatives live within their means. They don't, they don't, they don't have a budget. Let's say somebody has a budget of five million and they spend 10 million. Well, that's five million more they spent than what they had in their bank account. So they live within the means. So they spend one million, two million, three million, four million. That's less than five million. Their bank account is five million. That means they spent less than a million more than if they were to spend six million, they spent more money that they had in their bank account. You know, if somebody were to put a million dollars in their bank account and their budget for the whole year was five million and then he spent six million more money, you know, alone when the Federal you know, go from the US Treasury, the Federal Reserve, the government, the politicians, the military industrial complex, the non government organizations, their friends, their colleagues, themselves, and then the last, the people. So if the minarchists were to disobey the extortionists, which are the IRS agents and the paper printers, they do far more to change the world and if all million of them were to clean up a national park instead of voting, they would do far more to change the world than if all of them were to vote for a libertarian candidate or for them to violently impose the world upon the rest of those who are those of us who don't want to be ruled by anyone, including them and the minions. So the problem is, is with the statists, the minarchists, and even those who are anarchists who claim they are for freedom. You know, I have no right to impose a master or even a constitutional master or a limited government person to appoint it 
to wage the war over anyone. So that, that, that means I'm not voting for Joe Biden to be my master, Elizabeth Warren to be my master, uh, you know, anyone else, or Donald Trump. You know, I'm not voting in 2020 for a master. I'm just saying, hey, this is not what I'm going to do to advocate for freedom. You know, arguing over Donald Trump versus blank is arguing over whether this person should be ruled or that person should be ruled. Arguing who should be ruled more and who should have the throne is like arguing over who on the bully, who who the bully at the playground should be. Beat. Should it be should it be in a guy in the red shirt or should it be a guy in the blue shirt? How about nobody at all should be bullying anyone on the playground, whether the red shirt or the blue shirt. No bullying, no master, nobody on the throne. To imagine everyone to not imagine that Donald Trump isn't the president, but just simply a guy who happened to have the title of president. If everyone in the media tomorrow said, hey, this is, this is, this is how the problem reacts to the Biden conquer. If all of them were to be anti-war, all of them tomorrow, Rachel Maddow and all the others, from Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, if they were all to somehow magically hit a button and be anti-war and not an adventurer. They would do far more and not one day be not an adventurer, no anti-war, than they would if they were to vote. They do far more to convince conservatives to be believe in not an adventurer and liberal to be not an adventurer and anti-war than all of them combined would continue to do the same thing uh, day in and day out, if they were all to be anti-war, not an adventurer, and not advocating for any uh, any of the, the empire to continue. Um, so it's all about changing the minds and ideas of the masses at large. As long as they continue to believe that they need a president and they need a master, and they are they they to vote for a master. Nothing is gonna change in the short term. In the long term it will. But in the short term, they're not that one ruling class, put another one back up. So as long as they continue to believe that they need the IRS, they need a better job, nothing is going to change. Except for continuing to print money, except for continue to be the the world reserve currency. Nothing changes long term. Short term, right? Not long term. For them. Their friends may work up, their family may work up. But they're the ones doing the major. They're the ones still plugged in. So all they need is a little bit of nudge. Now it doesn't mean that all conservatives are are, are don't have good intentions. It doesn't mean all men of us don't have good intentions. It just means ninety nine percent of their life it's anarchism, but when they step in the voting group, that's when they throw the principles out the window. That's when they say, hey, I'm, I'm a minarchist, I'm for smaller government, but what about voting for those people who actually advocate for smaller government and believe in non intervention and believe in not police in the world? Where are the Romneys of the world in, uh, arguing for auditing the better job? Where are the Obamas in the world advocating for non intervention? not policing the war and being an umpire. Where are the Trump of the world advocating for ending the war on drugs and ending the federal and the IRS and advocating for lower taxes but cutting spending. You know, baseline spending, you know, if, if you if you if you have one, you have taxes, you have spending, you have one over here and you have one over here. But it's not gonna balance out. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna be print more money, and then politicians are gonna continue to raise money. You know, print money and then raise money. Nothing is going to change unless the electorate realizes, hey, we're not beholden to Donald Trump. We're beholden to a concept of more, rather than the politicians scribble write down known as laws. So, as long as the conservatives believe that they can trade 
one person for another Republican. Same thing with the playground analogy. The red shirt for the blue shirt, but nothing changes in the short term. You know, arguing back and forth over which bully and, and the playground should be in charge. You know, really, there, there can be no difference in the short term. Whether it's going to be the person in the red shirt bullying you or the person in the blue, blue shirt bullying you. How about no bullies? How about no presidents? Just people believing in themselves and advocating for self ownership and the not aggressive principle and following the golden rule. How about applying that universally to everyone? You know, to you, to your family members, to your friends, to your colleagues, to your bosses, and to people on the other side of the world, you know. So people who had to hurt you, you know, I can't go a thousand miles and and do anything to somebody. You know, I gotta apply at university, you know. I can't I can't walk a mile and walk into somebody's house and steal because that's wrong. I can't go a thousand miles, walk a thousand miles and walk in somebody's house and steal their stuff either. So it's it's gotta apply universally to the person I walk to a mile to the house to steal their stuff, or a thousand miles or any miles, you know. And I can't advocate on behalf of a government agent to steal my stuff or steal somebody else's stuff. You know, I, I can't have my neighbor advocating to steal my stuff or I can't advocate myself, whether by myself or a third party to steal people's stuff or the government doing it on my behalf. You know, when, when government says, hey, we're doing it for your benefit, we're doing it on behalf of you. That is, that is the trick they're, they're manipulating me into thinking that if, if you just give them more power and no more money, that they're doing it on your behalf. So what if they steal people's stuff and they don't charge them with a crime? You know, it's not okay to say, hey, we're going to steal your stuff, but, but we're not going to charge you the crime. Well, we're, we're, there's no victim. I mean, you're stealing your stuff, but you're not charging them with a crime. You still throw the stuff, so you're not gonna give it back to them. You know that that that's not that's not how due process works. You know, I can't go to somebody's house and say, "Hey, you know what? I, I'll steal your money, but I won't charge you the crime." You know, or um, I will advocate for some uh, person to do it. You know, even if I pay somebody on, on their own to steal for me, or by me directly doing it. It's not okay for me to do it. It's not okay for a third party to do it. It's gotta apply universally to both concepts, you know. To not aggression, you know. It's the law that saying I blank will advocate for politicians to write down blank in order to enforce at the barrel of a gun to take blank in order to say, hey, we are gonna throw this person in a cage or we are going to kill this person on behalf of our vote, you know, the status in the minute, you know, advocate for voting. You know, they're, they're going to say, hey, we advocate for the war on drugs to continue. You know, prohibition doesn't work, but of course, you know, the people repeating history are just going to say, hey, we just got to continue the war on drugs. You know, if all the police tomorrow said, hey, we want to abolish the war on drugs, we want to not lock up any more people who are any drug use. They do far more in one day advocating for ending the war on drugs and advocating for no one be no one more be no one being locked up anymore than if they were to continue to go to people's houses, house by house, apartment by apartment, locking up people. They do far more to disobey and not enforce the law and uphold people's right to self ownership and sovereignty, then if they were to continue to advocate against their own morals and their own values and continue locking up people. They do far more to disobey the Fed and the, the local, the local, federal, the local, state, and federal people who want them to afford, which are the politicians. All the police officers to disobey if tomorrow or the next week they all say, hey, we're not going to enforce the drug law anymore. They do far more in one week 
to disobey and not lock up anyone, then I fear to continue to lock up everyone for a plan. So the problem is, is people advocating for the next person to be on the throne. So, and as long as people continue to advocate for who should be on the throne, nothing in the short term is going to change. You don't vote in freedom. You don't you don't gain freedom by giving up something else. You know, I can't give up my right to a TSA agent and think I'm going to be safe. I can't give up my Fourth Amendment right and think that um, I'm going to be safe because of some terrorist attack or some uh, foreign boogeyman or domestic boogeyman, you know. And I can't advocate for somebody else to have their rights uh, taken away from them either. You know, I got to send a political amendment right or just the right in general to be left alone or the golden war to be followed between me and them. You know, I got to stand up for other people's rights. I got to defend their rights to be whomever, whomever they want. And, you know, if men are just going to vote or they're just going to disobey or, you know, I'm, I'm going to argue with them that they shouldn't vote, that they should disobey and feed the homeless, you know, but I, outside of voting, you know, if they want to feed the homeless, a uh, thousand men are just want to openly disobey a law. So those thousand men who happen to disobey the law would do far more than if those same thousand would vote for a person like Donald Trump to be in charge. So disobedience goes far more than voting and campaigning for somebody new to be in charge of the whole country of people who don't want to be bored. So disobedience will go far more than simply compliance and ruling over everyone and enforcing laws, restrictions, mandates, and just not enabling a central banker, you know, central planning, Keynesianism, and allowing people to freely exchange in the marketplace, and allow people the freedom of choice and freedom to decide for themselves what they want to buy, what they want to sell, what they want to sell it at, how much to how many, you know, people have freedom. What made America great was freedom and liberty. What's going to make America go down the crap hole is continuing to vote for Republican and Democrat and libertarianism, you know, of course that's different than Republican and Democrat, which is in the right direction. But, you know, making America great again is going to start with economics, understanding free market, and applying it, applying the golden rule universally, applying the non-aggression principle to thieve, to do, steal people's stuff, you know, doesn't mean all people to, you know, one thief steal somebody's stuff doesn't mean everyone in that same kind of color, gender, nationality, race, ethnicity is the exact same way. You know, that's collectivism, and I can't advocate for a small few to be the same as a whole group of people who don't do the same thing. So, you know, I can't say everyone is class is, is, is a anarchist, you know, I can just say, hey, I'm Mark and I'm a volunteerist and I can't apply every single thing universally to everyone in classes. To speak for me, I can only speak for myself and what I believe is freedom and not applying or not restricting anyone's freedoms or choices to be for them, but for them to make their own choices and freedom for themselves. And no one body and the children deciding for themselves who they want to associate with, who they want to talk to, and the parents to decide for them whether they should go to school and or if they should go to school at all, or whether when they get old enough they realize that when they're 18, they're on their own and they can't go to the government for a bailout. You know, the government shouldn't be bailing anyone to begin with. That is, that is wrong to bail out anyone, including those who happen to be connected to the, to the central bank and to the pawn, pulling out 
clear out the friends and their, their colleagues and too big to bail. You know, no company is too big to bail. If they don't get a bailout, bankruptcy in a free market would mean they would bankrupt, they go bankrupt and they would, they would somebody else would take over and make a profit. So bankruptcy in a free market would mean they wouldn't have a monopoly and competing with government. You know, they don't have competition, so, you know, competing against them, they're going to outlaw it because they're going to say, hey, we can't compete us, we, we don't like competition. And it just simply say, you know, if you introduce competition in Apple or just in the market, smaller firm gets bigger, the bigger firm gets smaller, and then take away market share, and that's how long term they two competing two two competing companies and businesses would lower the prices for everyone because they're competing and bring down the price. Quality goes up, the price goes down, cheaper, more affordable. If a monopoly, if it's a monopoly and they're, they're, they're charging more money for it and it's not becoming cheaper, it's because it's, it's because that they're a monopoly and the quality goes down. The product is more expensive, more affordable due to distortion in the marketplace and how the flip tree propped up. You know, the, the dollars are officially inflated and propped up and everything else in the stock market are officially propped up by quantitative reason and a central bank and a central planning is not free market. It's not the producing, saving, investing, and uh, producing things and consuming things and investing and have an incentive to produce money. Um, it is the same as putting money out of the air and putting it into somebody's bank account and dividing the money and investing in the dollar. Um, long term, I wouldn't think it is a necessary strategy to make more money. You're going to have to, uh, the only thing I could say is short term and maybe go up for you there and some other time, but you no know, disobedience to anything, a law, a, a mandate, a restriction, you know, that's far more than voting and campaigning for the next person to be in charge. So disobedience goes far more than just, you know, voting and campaigning for somebody to be in charge. And then it goes for the left, for advocating for the uh, far left, the far right, you know, if they were to somehow uh, merge with uh, court opposite, uh, far side of the political spectrum would be quite the, the un unusual thing, unusual, but, you know, they can advocate for open freedom of association of ideas. You know, a, a progressive could get in, get in um, on uh, auditing the federal bill. A Democrat could be pro peace, anti war, by advocating for getting out of the war. Co sponsors, so uh, alliances and cooperative, cooperative, you know, cooperating with other people and getting along and discussing ideas and uh, alliances between Republicans and Democrats without uh, getting away any of your convictions or your beliefs. You know, if, a, if the atheist and a, a Christian can get along without uh, religion or without, you know, whether one believes God or without God, you know, the conscience and the, the morality, you know, discussing philosophy and discussing ideas. So in the market, the best idea is when, but in a free market, you know, people can make money different ways. Seven ways to Sunday, you know, so they can invest, they can uh, buy stock, they can uh, buy gold, silver, crypto, or start a company and become their own boss, hire people, and then they can also trade, they can also do all kinds of things. Sell stuff on the internet, produce a book for revenue and profit, which is nothing wrong with that. It means you get your name out there and get recognition. 
and that there's something wrong with creating books and having books out there for people to read. So disobedience to whether it's the population disobeying the ruling class or people in the ruling class quitting and going into private sector to earn money and not have the revolving door of corporations and lobbyists in the private sector, but they quit lobbying altogether and they they go into the private sector and they give their secret away or they they have some knowledge that they can make a company bank. You know, I don't believe in lobbying, I don't believe in uh money should be involved in a campaign. I don't believe that um it should be involved in um, raising money, you know, outside influence. You know, I think it should be, if people want somebody to run, uh, I, I would, I wouldn't pay a politician to run, but, you know, I'd leave that option out to many people. Could decide if they want to pay a politician personally, $5, $10 for crypto, dollar, gold, whatever they happen to be. You know, I'm not going to restrict other people to pay politicians. I'm just not going to pay a politician to run for office or to vote for one to go for office. Not even my local dog catcher, but my local council. Because even at a local level, 100 people, 1,000 people, 200 million, 2 million. You know, I don't believe in imposing my world upon 1,000 people. So if I don't believe in imposing my world upon 1,000 people, so you go up the scale, thousand million, hundred million, seven billion. There's seven individual, seven billion individuals, each own themselves, and each have the right to their body, to just require property, their stuff, and they each have moral convictions, preferences, sexual habits, personal habits, different of mind. And that's what makes the world unique. People have different ideas, people have different religion, non religion. Beliefs that are different in mind, and that's okay. That means I treat them with kindness, and that they treat me unkind, and they don't treat me right according to the golden rule. You know, violate my rights or happen to take something that doesn't belong to them. You know, I can't do the same thing and take their rights away or take things away from them. I can just have to leave them alone and just associate them. Just associate with them. They happen to do something. That I don't approve of, or I don't agree with. And if they happen to do something to me that I find detestful, or you know something um, wrong, you know, but it doesn't mean no tomorrow. So, you know, if they happen to do, if they call somebody racist name, you know, I'm not gonna follow the crowd and say, hey, that's okay because they said it a a a word. Uh, I, I believe that shouldn't be said at all, you know. I can just, just, just associate with that person because I said a word that I don't think other people should say even in their same race or their same sex should use, you know. But, you know, I'm not for censoring people, you know. Um, I'm for freedom and allowing people to say what they want, but, you know, freedom should be a racist, a bigot, or uh, whatever they happen to be for freedom to be themselves. So it's not about restriction or censorship. You know, I believe libertarians can be libertarians, but I just don't believe in voting for a libertarian candidate or using the libertarian platform to hop on and use it to my advantage. I can't use the libertarian philosophy or the libertarian platform to advocate for my own philosophy. I can just have to leave people, leave people alone and mind my own better. And that means all the libertarians are, are, whether they believe in personal freedom, economic freedom, you know, people that believe in different things. Don't they leave people alone and they don't pose the world. Fine with me, I'm not gonna pose my world on them and they don't do the same to me. Fine, we can go our separate ways and live how we see fit. Freedom means the freedom to 
uh, do as we please so long as we're not harming or hurting anyone in any way and not violating the non aggression principle and not violating the golden rule of doing that, doing unto others as others would do unto you. And liberty, the philosophy of liberty means the right to own your own body, the right to you exactly acquire money, property, ownership of your own body. And that means also the ownership of paying somebody because you own your own body uh, along with the money to solve a, well, even if it's a sexual habit, you still own your own body. You still have the right to pay somebody to do whatever you want as long as you take responsibility for it afterwards if there's some sort of unforeseen thing happen. And um, so the woman owns her body if she pays a man, and the man pays his own body because he pays a woman, and vice versa. So they both own their body, so they can do, they can decide to do whatever they want. So there, is, there should be no out, outside third party intervening between the two people who happen to trade uh, money, which is a a form of exchange of money. Uh, it, money is just a medium of a thing. I mean, they, they think one thing, you know, if I, if I pay $10 to the local store for something that costs $10, where well, I get the product and they get the money. So disobedience is um, far more of a tactic. It is a tactic to be used by those who are politicians, if they disobey a law or they disobey something and they both know, or somebody in the population who happens to not believe in political authority. Or they don't believe in advocating violence by the way themselves to be a third party. So there's a, lots of different strategies and tactics to be used by anarchists and volunteers. But the best way is to leave people be and let them live their lives as they keep it and uh, associate with them and pop them, uh, nudge them towards freedom, and nudge them towards the non-aggression principle, and nudge them towards the, the foreign policy of non-intervention, whether that's liberal or conservative, um, introducing the concept of uh, pro-peace, anti-war, uh, the anti-war will up and the anti-war right, there to come together for peace, and anti-war, that would be a big coalition of both parties coming together for ending the wars all overseas. And I do believe I am optimistic long-term for freedom and liberty, because I think that the longer that the dollar is the reserve currency the war, not so much longer anymore, but the longer it continues to be extorted, not extorted, but exported out of America, to be uh, traded for oil in other countries stop adopting the dollar and trading in their own local currency or foreign currency, then the dollar will be no longer accepted and the, the dollar will be no longer uh, allowed in the country because they will no longer accept it and that would be a dollar crisis and that would turn a recession into a question and a turn the 08, 08 O seven, O eight, and O nine financial crisis will make it look like a a small thing compared to what's coming up. Because we we as a society, uh, student loans, but people didn't uh, acquire the the money uh, by themselves. They're spending that money, but the politicians enabled it, and then the people voting for the politicians. Why not cutting spending and saving and uh, cutting anything out of the, the budget, you know, raising it? Did, it, did, it, did that film, you know, student loan debt, car debt, audio debt, housing debt, credit card debt is out of control. So any way to, uh, the only way to, to solve that is cutting spending and um, living with the new means and uh, even cutting back things and living beneath you mean meaning if you got a budget of a thousand dollars in a month you 
you can cut 500, where you just save 500, and you can say, hey, there's $500 in the next month uh, budget, and I save $500, I cut it out of my budget, and I save myself from spending 500 somewhere else, and save 500 dollars and you can also use disobedience to stop buying products at a store or stop buying products at a, at a market store or through a company. And once enough thing gets out, bad PR will not do anything to bring even the biggest company in the world monopolies on the sale of something as large as Google. Bad PR comes out about Google. Nothing in the world is going to solve people stop Google from acquiring even bigger, more of a market share, a bad PR, and nobody's buying Google's product. So nothing in the world can stay on top forever, not even statism or the, the politicians. So whether it's, the, you know, whether it's Google or whether it's the people who believe that the politicians should be in charge, not even them last forever, not even the, the largest corporation in the world last forever. So there may be a unlimited amount of ways you can make money, but there's a limit on you can't continue to print money forever. There may be unlimited ways for people to make money, you know, by scams or by trading or by fraud or scamming pe scamming thousands of millions of people in in a day and not. Uh, uh, acquiring money outright through the voluntary thing, you know, but uh, of course that day comes to an end too, because then once the scam is exposed and then once bad PR against your reputation, and once it gets out there, there's no amount of good you can do to outweigh the bad if the PR, bad PR, public relations, whether it's a company or a person's reputation that changes society's uh, opinion about you and about the company. So no matter bad PR is gonna change big companies from being on top forever or a person's reputation. So with that being said, disobedience is far more of a, a hindrance to the ruling class, meaning the politicians, the bureaucrats in charge, then voting and campaigning for the same thing to be in power and to be enabled by way of voting for them. Or a democracy or a constitutional public with the Bill of Rights, you know. Politics and government and all the other voodoo garbage that every one of us was out in school doesn't change morality, doesn't change are you right from wrong. Taxation doesn't, uh, doesn't become a good thing. You know, stealing doesn't become good just because you call it something else. The IRS doesn't suddenly just because call called something good just because it happened to exist in political terms of tax agents. Nothing in the political realm becomes good just because you have more people on your side or just because you have more people voting and campaigning for you. The only way that anything becomes good is uh, if you place your own content and morality over that of uh, politicians and the laws and the laws, and you you do the right thing as opposed to doing the the immoral and the the unthinkable, you know, like following the law and enforcing the law. It is the same thing as protecting people's rights and taking them away. Same thing if I were to do the same thing only without a badge. A badge doesn't mean that you're automatically good. A badge doesn't mean that you're automatically or suddenly doing the right thing if you happen to have a badge on your uniform. A uniform doesn't mean that the person is good or bad, it just happens to be they happen to leave people alone and they don't put people in cages. They happen to have a bad, but they arrest them in the river. Well, that's not them acting as an agent of the state, that's acting as a, um, acting on their own conscience and doing the right thing, which is 
of course, should be expected as somebody who has more as a, as a moral compass and wants to do the right thing. It doesn't have to take a badge to arrest you somebody from a river. It just happens to have somebody courageous enough to go in the river to arrest the person in the first place from drowning and dying. So criminals don't follow morals, they don't follow the law. But it doesn't mean writing something down and making it immoral means that everyone has to have the right sacrifice and to be taken away either. So if I write something down that I am in charge of your life and I have the right to your guns, I have the right to you, your money, it doesn't become moral just because I happen to write it down and say, hey, here, here's a piece of paper and I have the right to yourself more than you do. You have the right to yourself, you have the right to your guns, you have the right to protect yourself from me or by a power to you somehow magically pay somebody on my behalf to do it for me, it's still not okay. It still wouldn't be okay if I did it, it wouldn't be okay if somebody else um, did it for me. Even if I were to pay a hitman to do it, it wouldn't be okay to do it. If I were to do it on my own, it wouldn't be okay. Or be yeah, the government to do it. It's universally applied to both the hitman and the government agent. So, morally, Morally, it means doing the right thing, following the golden rule, following the non principle, and you know, obeying people, you know, as far as, you know, don't hurting them, and obeying, disobeying the laws that, that are immoral to me, which uh, means don't take another people's right. And obeying the cops doesn't mean that you're not going to have your right taken away. Obeying just means that you happen to go along to get along and, um, you know, obeying somebody's command to not be killed, that's just self-preservation. That's not saying that uh, it, it's okay to obey, but it just means that you, it just means that you, uh, you, you buy your life to go along in order to not be killed outright if you were to do something. Now, if you were to say, okay, where it's a crime and there's no crime, and they still think that you are doing something immoral, like if you have a plant in your car, you have a marijuana joint in your car, but they want to arrest your car and they want to they find it, doesn't mean that it's morally to lock you in a cage and arrest you for something in your car. It just means that you have something in your car that they happen to find more and they happen to find the the imaginary thing called the state and the politicians believe you shouldn't have it. But I'm not in charge of your car, I'm not charging your body, so I can't do it on my own to say that you have committed a crime because uh, nowhere have you violated somebody's rights. If you have something in your car that the car doesn't belong to the cop, it doesn't belong to the politician, it belongs to somebody who happen to have the car and that's you, and that doesn't mean that somebody the bad has the right to violate your rights and take your stuff away. And and for the common good or the collective or society, it just means they are violating your rights and they are they are they're enforcing the law. It doesn't mean they're doing the right thing and saying, okay, hey, I'll give you a warning you you have this in the car, but I'm not gonna arrest you, I'm not gonna put you in a jail cell for doing this or they give you a fine and they say, hey, you have to pay the fine. I would order to say, hey, you, we are gonna, we are gonna pay for your rehab or we're gonna, we're gonna do something to uh, compensate you for having it in your car or they'll, they'll say, hey, we realize you, you have a problem with drugs so we're gonna send you to rehab. You know, I'd rather people who have drug problems to go to rehab or get professional help rather than all being locked up in a cage or being arrested for something uh, even if they directly do it and um, they have a prescription doesn't mean they have the right to have their bi uh, rights violated by somebody and, uh, and in charge whether it's a cop or whether it's a judge or a prosecutor or something. 
you know, Tony doesn't own the person, uh, the dub doesn't own the person, the politician, the cop doesn't, it's just you. You and, and your body. Your body belongs to you. Whether male, female, whatever happens to be in society, everyone owns the body. And so the judge realizes that everyone that's a son to jail owns the body. The police realize that everyone owns the body. And they stop being a police, and they take up the uniform and they start acting as a more civilized human being. So maybe my opinions are those who have a bad to change, but as long as enforcing the law and saying I'm just filing orders, I'm just doing my job. They're not going to get my respect just because they happen to have a badge and they happen to have something on their uniform that doesn't automatically uh, command respect to everyone that happens to know them. If they happen to rescue somebody and they stop being a cop and they rescue somebody from a river and they suddenly become a cop and they don't put any more anyone anyone anymore in jail or anything and the, the last thing they do on the the the, the job is they rescue somebody that that's commandable that's the role that should be a good thing to be celebrated so the celebrated thing would be stop being arm agents of the ruling class and the politicians become a civilized more upstanding person so follow their own conscience to not be a robot. That means changing the cop view of everyone else as people who own their own body and those who happen to obey the cop because it's the law and them following their own conscience and doing the more things they need. I'm not going along with you because I happen to have something uh, that belongs to me and isn't yours. Uh, those people would have disobeyed, of course, I understand that somebody had a, a, a gun to your head, you can't simply disobey and think that they're, they're not going to kill you, but if you have a something to defend yourself and not to defend yourself, and they happen to miss or they happen to try to uh, try to harm you in some way and you, you're able to uh, retrieve the weapon and stop them, and you both go out, uh, you both walk away and nobody gets hurt. Well, then they realize that they matched with the wrong person. So criminals or or anyone who happened to not do the right thing by having an incentive to uh, do things the correct way in the moral way, and also for politicians to create out of writing things down by a words and scribbles on paper to those who happen to have something they don't believe should be yours, which is yours and not theirs to begin with, just because I happen to write stuff down, just like if I were to write stuff down, doesn't mean I have a right to your gun or your body or anything that you acquired to volunteer your things or will you be a uh, just required property. Your house doesn't belong to me, your money doesn't belong to me, your gun don't belong to me. Nothing of yours belongs to me. The only thing that belongs to me is my stuff. That means I own that, I own that, and that, and I don't have, I don't have to keep it, but I can sell it if I choose to do so, but I don't have a right to sell it. If you have the same TV than I do, we can trade TV, or we can, it's, you can give me money for a TV, or you can, or I can just sell it, and I don't have to have it anymore. But it doesn't mean people have the right to come into my apartment and steal my stuff. So nothing of anyone, anyone belongs to me, or a politician, or somebody with a bad, or somebody called a TSA agent. They're just a person. So imagine them without the uniform. It's just a person. It's because they happen to file laws, and they have a bad, and they have a uniform. Doesn't change in it, uh, moral act into a moral act into a moral act. Um, so if they happen to be moral and they, they do the right thing and they don't do anything, getting on, well, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna criticize them for doing the right thing, but um, I'm gonna criticize those 
who happen to do immoral things, regardless if they happen to have a badge or not. Just like if somebody were to steal, steal from a store, a thief would steal, they would get the same criticism as if the cop would do the exact same thing. So disobedience would do far more than voting and campaigning for laws and campaigning for politicians' scribbles and writing stuff down and happening to enforce it at the borough of a gun. That's all the law is. Enforcing it at the borough of a gun. And that is a lot different than defending yourself or or your family or your kids or yourself or your husband or your wife. So you can defend yourself. So in conclusion, if all the men are the liberal change would disobey tomorrow, they do far more than if they were to do to all vote and they were all to uh, put Donald Trump in power. If they all to disobey Donald Trump tomorrow, they would they wouldn't they wouldn't have his support and his whole entire charade and illusion of power would evaporate rapidly and it would decrease in a matter of seconds, minutes, and hours, and all of them, all of them forces, and I would imagine to uh, believe in him would be gone, and there would be no more uh, enforcement of anyone, and there would be no more liberal change, or and I could believe in Donald Trump. If all those who believe in freedom were to believe, or no longer believe in Donald Trump, were then Nobody would be, uh, nobody would be following his his words. And uh, same thing with the the media and all the people who happen to believe in his his words and his actions. Uh, they were all to just obey uh, cops and his supporters would do far more if they were to vote for the next puppet in power. Because it's all there is to show. It's just a way it's an illusion for the wrong class. To rule over. Divide and conquer and problem action system.